Okay, this is to uh, take you through uh, how to get your data into sorted order, uh, ready to maybe look at a couple of hypotheses. So I'm going to um, imagine a hypothesis where I'm looking at gender comparisons. So I'm only going to sort this data into males and females sections, and I'm going to be saying to setting a hypothesis that uh, the amount of sleep. <coughs> Uh, will affect um, the average drop time. So I believe that um, people who sleep longer will have um, quicker drop time tests on average. So that allows me to then calculate uh, the mean average. Um, I can calculate the standard deviation and uh, look at the spread of the data and see which is more consistent, the male or the female data. I could also draw a scatter graph uh, to allow me to look at the correlation between the amount of sleep and the memory, uh, sorry, the drop test average. Um, obviously, if uh, the longer the sleep, um, then the quicker the drop test then we'd expect to see a negative correlation uh, going on there. So we'll see how it goes. So to sort the data then, I've um, got a file open in Excel, although this would work uh, very much in other uh, spreadsheet packages that you can get free from the internet. So let's have a look. So we highlight the whole data, so that's the cell between the A and the 1. And that then allows me to go to data, sort, and make sure my headers uh, are ticked, and then I can sort by gender. So click OK. That allows me then to copy across um, the female data for a start, and then I can do the male data later. Uh, so I copy across the female data, so copy, uh, put it into a new sheet, uh, right hand close my paste, and then I can uh, open the uh, cells if I want to, to make it look better. Okay, so what I'd uh, first like to do is calculate the average drop test uh, time. Uh, I'm not going to convert these uh, centimetres into times because it's just using a formula, uh, a half gt squared um, for gravity and the time uh, fallen and things. So we're going to just take the average of the centimetres. So if we put uh, equals, average, and then highlight the three cells for the drop test. Um, the good thing about the average function is it'll ignore empty cells and then it'll just average out what we've got. So if we've got that, and if we go to the home section and just make sure the decimal places is uh, one decimal place by using the uh, decimal place keys at the top here, then I can double click and make sure that the formulas are working in automatic mode. And then I've got all my average uh, drop times um, as centimeters. Now, some of these have got division by zero, that's because no data was typed in for these people, so these will be no good to us at all. So we can just delete the division by zeros. So delete and delete. Okay. Now the thing we must do with data is check whether we've got any um, outliers. So what I tend to do is view, freeze panes, uh, freeze the top row, uh, um, I'll actually freeze so we'll unfreeze those panes. We'll actually freeze where we are now, just freeze panes. Okay, so let's just do that again. View, freeze panes, unfreeze panes. Um, click in the uh, top cell there. So freeze, freeze panes. Yeah, that's better. So it allows us to keep seeing the headings all the time. Right, so I want to check if my average drop time. Uh, if we put a heading in here, so average drop distance, that's what we're doing. And we center that data just to make it look neat. Okay, so we want to check uh, whether there's any outliers in the uh, average drop distance. Uh, I'm not going to check for outliers in the amount of sleep because uh, nothing was over 24 hours. Uh, so therefore, the amount of time people said they slept, we have to take their word for it. So we're going to check for the data. So we're going to calculate the minimum value. We're going to calculate the maximum value. We're going to calculate the uh, lower quartile. We're going to calculate the median. And we're going to calculate the upper quartile, uh, the interquartile range, the upper fence, and the lower fence. So the minimum function is equals min, and then highlight the data. So the data is there, close the bracket. Right, so let's have a quick check. So that's I4 to I93. Right, so equals max, 
bracket i4 colon i93 save as dragon all the time uh, equals quartile for the quartiles um, bracket i4 to i93 now actually I want this as uh, fixed because I want to copy this uh, formula for uh, the median and the upper quartile so we put dollars actually so dollar i uh, dollar 4 colon dollar uh, i dollar 93 comma because I want the first quartile so 25th percentile so we click that so that's the value. As you can see, it's gone to too many decimal places. So just take that down to a sensible number, one, because uh, we're working with whole number data, and one decimal place is about as accurate as we can go. Now I can copy that um, formula down for the other two. So let's get down for the upper quartile. Right. So the upper lower quartile is quarter one. The median is quarter two, so we can change that to quarter two. And the upper quartile is quarter three, so we can change that to quarter three. The interquartile range is equal to the upper quartile value minus the lower quartile value. And the upper fence is equal to the upper quartile value plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. Now let's just check that we get the interquartile range right. I99, the upper quartile, take away I97, yep, so that's fine. Okay, uh, the lower fence is equal to the lower quartile value minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. Okay, again, if we just make these to sensible degrees of accuracy, so just one decimal place. Right, so we can see that the lower fence is at 3 and the upper fence is at 56.6. So if we look through our data, the minimum was 6, so there's nothing below the lower fence, and our maximum is 49, so nothing above the upper fence. So all our data is here within the outlier boundaries, so we'll use it all to do the rest of the calculations. So the other calculations I want to do is the mean average and the standard deviation. Okay. So for the mean average, we just type equals average, and the data was I3 to I93. And the standard deviation equals, oops, ST, D, V, bracket, and again, I3, colon, I93, close that. Okay, so we can... Again, make these sensible degrees of accuracy, so one decimal place is about as accurate as we can go. Okay, so for our female data, uh, we've now found the minimum, maximum, lower quartile, median, upper quartile, interquartile range. We've checked our outliers, and we've calculated the mean average and the standard deviation. Lots of data then to start making comparisons once we've done the same for the male data. Um, also, we said that we're going to draw a scatter graph. Uh, lots of ways of doing this. We could use autograph, or uh, we can use the Excel function for doing this as well. So, if we take the amount of sleep, um, there is more than one way to do this, but this just tends to be the way that I do it, so that I've got everything where I want it. So, I'm going to copy that and put it there. Uh, and then I'm going to take the drop test average, and again, I'm going to copy it. I just like it next to each other because then uh, it means I'm plotting the uh, data how I feel I want to do it. So because we wanted the hypothesis to be that the amount of sleep affects the drop test, then the amount of sleep is the independent variable, so that's the x values, and the drop test is the uh, independent event, the output variable, because that's what we think is going to be affected by it. So we can take the data we highlight it and we can insert scatter and there's our scatter graph and we can drag that over to a sensible place now some of the things that we can do with scatter graphs is if we delete that make it a bit bigger if we right hand mouse click on the um, scatter graph then we can add a trend line and make sure it's a linear one because when we do the lines of best fit we talk about linear terms we can display the equation and we can display the r squared r squared value now the r squared value is a kind of um, spearman's rank so it's an alternative to spearman's rank it's pearson's and it's r squared is 0 0.001 so if we type in equals square root of 0 0.0014 
we can see that the value is virtually zero which is suggesting there's no linear correlation which you can look at the scatter graph and probably see that same thing so that's um, some examples of how you can use Excel to calculate lots of the data for you and allowing you to calculate uh, the averages, check for outliers and everything else. I hope it's of use.